Welcome to my channel Flying Higher. This is a new segment featuring the comparisons and news regarding the cruise and the aviation industry within the Asia Pacific region. I hope that this will become a regular video on my channel and if you do have suggestions for new video ideas, please let me know in the comments below. I thought I'd start us off with cruising. The cruising industry is a very well established segment of the travel industry in the west. However, over here in the east, it is still a market that has the potential to expand and many cruise lines have already seriously reviewed the deployment within the region, taking advantage of the early opportunities. With many more cruise lines entering the Asia-Pacific market and having so many options to select from, it may be hard for first-time cruisers, or even frequent cruisers for a fact, to pick the right cruise ship for their vacation. So which cruise line should you pick? Well, let me lay down the facts for you. My goal is to be able to inform you of the facts and of what to expect before you make your decisions. As this is a very subjective topic, I will give my opinion on experiences of both types of cruise lines. I thought it would be a good idea to look at Royal Caribbean and Crystal Cruises. If you have discussed about cruising with relatives or friends, then you probably would have heard about the brand Royal Caribbean International. Royal Caribbean has won the Best Cruise Line Award and Best Cruise Line in the Caribbean for 14 years and running. Royal's fleet is made up of 24 ships over 7 classes with 6 more in order. These 7 classes are the Oasis class, Quantum class, Freedom class, Voyager class, Radiance class, Vision class, and Empress class. Royal Caribbean's largest vessel, Symphony of the Seas, is 228,081 gross tons, and this has the capacity to hold 6,680 passengers, whilst their smallest ship, Empress of the Seas, is only 48,563 gross tons, and this can hold up to 1,840 passengers. Crystal, on the other hand, runs four different types of organizations under the main parent Crystal Cruises brand. They have six vessels, two operating the Ocean Voyages and three operating under Crystal River Cruises, and one under Crystal Yacht Cruises. Crystal's largest ship, Crystal Serenity, has a tonnage of 68,870 gross tons, and this can hold up to 1,070 passengers, while the smallest, Crystal Mozart, is a river cruise vessel and has a tonnage of 532 gross tons, which can hold up to 154 passengers. Even though Royal Caribbean does have several small ships in its fleet, it is likely that these would be phased out in the future once the six new builds enter and replace the older and smaller ships. Small ships now seem to be a thing of the past, with the trend of the cruise industry shifting to large ships for all, being the destination itself rather than focusing on unique ports of call. The evolution of Royal's business model has discontinued the idea of running a fleet of small-sized ships, as they are now targeting families and the masses. Royal prides themselves in many efforts as a choice of cruise line for families, emphasizing on their endless amounts of activities to keep everyone entertained on the biggest and newest ships. There is a dilemma that many people face when choosing the size of a ship or the cruise line. Is a, sh is a ship big enough that there are enough activities to keep me entertained throughout the duration of the cruise? And can this ship dock at the port of call that I want to visit? Usually many people have to compensate one or the other to be satisfied with the choices that they have made. But I believe that there is another way to view this. I usually decide this early on by categorizing what kind of cruise I wish to embark on. There are many different reasons why people want to cruise. Thus, I've categorized this into two main categories. The first takes a more traditional approach and one that is less seen often nowadays. This is what I like to call exotic cruising, while the other is a more common form of cruising and one that many cruise lines are trying to target. This is what I call cruising for the ship. Exotic cruising is great for taking culturally immersive vacations, whether it's learning about the ruins of the Roman Empire or river cruising down the Yangtze in China. Those who cruise for the ship, however, usually do so because it just seems easier this way when traveling with extended family or friends, or perhaps someone who's interested in trying a trans-Pacific, transatlantic, or even an inaugural cruise. And by doing, by categorizing this into these two different segments, um, it really helps me to set my mind and to make the right choices to get the best out of my cruise vacation. That being said, this method is not foolproof and it's just something that I can share regarding my experiences with having many debates about where to go and what would be the most fun option. What I found on cruising with Royal Caribbean in comparison to Crystal is that it's a whole different league of its cruise lines. 
I found myself to be really entertained on Royal Caribbean's newest ships like Quantum of the Seas and even the older ships like Mariner of the Seas, but actually I am equally as entertained on Crystal Symphony as well. Whilst it is undeniable that Royal Caribbean does offer a range of daily programs from poolside competitions to bumper cars that can make you feel very invigorating, the headline shows and special guests on Crystal's evening programs are truly spectacular. It really depends on what kind of traveller you are, whether you are one that lazes by the pool deck with a book in hand, or one that loves rock climbing and surfing. It's also important to think about what kind of service you expect realistically if you're going to pay $2,000 for your cruise vacation. Don't expect a butler to be at your back and call, because you pay for what you get. That of course does not mean that you should not complain either if you think that you are not getting your money's worth. This is something that you also have to take into consideration as cruise lines can offer very different standards of service and you would have to compromise again to see what best suits you and your travel companions. To all travelers, I do recommend that you do not have to limit yourself to taking one cruise in a lifetime, but you know, you should go out there and experience all kinds of different cruises for yourself and then come to a consensus of what's better for you, big line cruising or small ship cruising. For those of you who prefer cultural explorations while cruising, then small ship cruising for you is definitely the way to go. You can visit exotic ports of call, sailing into places where large ships are restricted, such as the Greek Isles and the gl glaciers of Alaska. You can spend sea days enjoying sitting by the deck, watching the world sail by, or if you're scared that you might be bored to death on a small ship, then there are so many large ships to choose from with new and innovative things to do, from indoor skydiving to go-kart racing to surfing. And these are just a few examples of all the different and varied acti activities that you can find on cruise ships nowadays. So I hope that you have enjoyed this week's video. Do let me know whether you found any ways that helps you to easily decide on what kind of cruise you want to embark on. See you in the next video and until next time.